Hey guys, welcome back to the Hillside Garden. And today I'd like to focus on a native pollinator. Uh, did you know that there is a bee that is known as the squash bee? Uh, until last year, honestly, I did not know that. Uh, it looks very similar to a honeybee. However, if you uh, study the coloration on the tail and the abdomen, uh, they are very unique. Uh, this species is, like I said, native to North America and Central America. Uh, it specializes in pollinating plants of the squash, uh, I guess, or more commonly the curcubid family, something like that. Anyhow, uh, I was trying to catch some in here. There was there were a lot of them. I'm, of course I bring the camera out and they're gonna fly away so hopefully we'll get one just to magically land on a flower in front of us as they had been kind of passing back and forth but uh, yeah going ahead and talk about the squash bee uh, it has a very unique relationship with the plant uh, from what I've researched and read these guys actually will the females sorry the females will uh, burrow between one to two feet underneath the ground deposit a few eggs seal it up and just disappear. And they'll do this about in the summertime. Uh, the eggs will have plenty of uh, honey or pollen and stuff inside the cells. They'll develop, they'll hibernate for the winter, and in the summertime or late spring, like we have now, late June, you're gonna start seeing these guys pop up everywhere. And uh, you know, the first glance you look, you might say, hey, these are just honeybees. But uh, in studying last year, I was, uh, see the flower back there? Still no bees. I think I might be scaring them off by talking, but they might show back up. Anyhow, uh, these guys will, you know, they'll, they'll dig down, put the eggs, they'll hibernate for the winter, come out in the summertime whenever all the squash plants are flowering. And they will then uh, continue the life cycle. They'll live close by to the squash. They will then, uh, you know, continue the life cycle of just uh, depositing eggs near the squash. But that brings me to another point that I've also uh, researched on this is the importance of no-till. Uh, because these, uh, these insects are going to place their eggs so close to the, um, the plants in the fields that when you come through with the big tractor, if you're tilling deep enough, you're pretty much just gonna wipe these guys out. So these are a very beneficial native pollinator. They are, uh, of course, native to the area. So I didn't uh, purposely bring these in. I didn't know these things existed till last year, but hey, um, you, you learn something new every year. So I was hoping I could catch one here uh, live in action, but I'm pretty sure I'm just scared them off. But I'll make sure I get a couple of pictures, hopefully, and at least put it on the thumbnail or give you a, a better picture. But yeah, go ahead and uh, research that. Uh, the squash bee. It's a very fascinating, uh, fascinating uh, insect and just shows you how many how many different pollinators there really are out there. I, I mean, I understand the honeybees and the the pesticides and the colony collapse and all these kind of things and I get it but remember there are plenty plenty of pollinators out there that uh help everybody out so yeah just focus on all of the pollinators that's what you really need to do to have a very thriving uh, functioning garden and uh this is not about a pollinator but I want to show you something right here I just noticed this little guy right here where is it You can see or not? No, it's not going to show up. It's in the little shadow right here. There's actually a Mexican bean beetle. I think I looked it up before. These things are agricultural pests, so I'm sorry that one has to go. I won't show you that one on a camera, but check this out too. I'll bring you along while I got you here. Anyhow, see the little spider guy. Hey, little spider, it's not gonna focus. Maybe, there it is. See, the spider is actually eating uh, a bug of some kind, but there's some spider webs going on in there, and that's cool. Uh, for those of you who have read uh, Masanobu Fukuyoku's book, One Straw Revolution, uh, one of the tenets he preaches is that the spider population of your fields is actually in the very indicator of how healthy your uh, ecosystem is, as spiders are an indicator species, I guess you could call them, a very healthy functioning ecosystem. So yeah, that's some uh, proof positive right there that at least we have something going on for us, that's good. But uh, some yellow squash in here, doing great, getting pollinated by these squash bees amongst other things. And probably can't focus enough. Back in there, some more flowers. Some zucchini that are growing straight up, which is weird. 
and one growing on the ground down there. Uh, we're getting to that time of year where your zucchinis are just growing so fast you can't pick them fast enough. All right, guys. Well, oh, I just missed one. It was right there. And it just flew away. I just scared it away. All right, guys. Well, uh, I'll try to wrap it up here. I was hoping I really could catch something uh, on camera here, but I'm pretty sure I'm just scared them off by being crouched down here amongst all the plants. Uh, like I said, I'll try to get some pictures for you. And there's another ladybug. Cool. So ladybug landed out here, probably hunting some aphids. So you are more than welcome to stay. Uh, enjoy your time in the garden. Uh, thanks for sticking around, guys. And uh, yeah, do some research. Find out some new things about your garden. Be fascinated at how many different insects and pollinators are out there. They're working very hard to benefit you every single day. All right, guys. This is Dave the Hillside Gardener. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.